Hi, I'm a person, and this is a video that I made, and I'm really excited to be making it because the rest of the year as a Switch owner is really exciting for game releases. If you owned one of these bad boys all year, you'll know for like the first six months, it was pretty slow. There was some third party stuff, a couple of okay exclusive releases, but nothing that really wowed the pants off anyone. And it did start picking up around June or July. You know, games like Mario Maker 2 are obviously really friggin' awesome and worth having a Switch for, but over Overall, it, it's still been pretty slow. That all changes in just a few days actually, and then for the rest of the year, it's going to be pretty intense. To the point where you're gonna have to start picking and choosing which games you really wanna buy, which games you don't mind waiting for, and then you're just gonna have to write some games off altogether because there's no way that we can afford to buy all of these, Nintendo. I don't know why it just happened this way where everything seems to be slam crammed into the last few months of the year, but it's gonna be big. Just like this video is gonna be big, so I'm gonna shut up and get on with it. Today we have 18 big games releasing on Switch from now to the end of the year. With all that said, I have brand new merch, which is something I'm gonna try and say a little bit more often, and you can check that down below. My girlfriend has a channel now, and you can watch that down below. Before you forget, subscribe, like the video, and maybe even follow me on Twitter. I do some, I, I, I tweet. <laughs> All right, whatever, let's do it. Let me know what your favorite game is from this video down below. So as I said, all of this craziness starts in just a few days from now. And depending when you watch this, it could be tomorrow or it could even really be today. Astral Chain releases August 30th. I just want to start with Astral Chain's graphics a drop dead freaking gorgeous. There are so many things happening on screen and it's pure eye candy. Aside from looking absolutely stunning, the gameplay looks pretty stellar as well. Platinum Games is known for its fast paced combo driven combat and it looks like they will not disappoint in that department with Astral Chain. The game also implements detective work and awesome special legion abilities. So as I said, it's either out now or coming very soon, but the reviews are already pouring in from places and it's looking like a straight 9 out of 10 across the board a near perfect game. Ah, I'm so ready. September 20th is a stupid day if you're a fan of Nintendo and the Switch. To start with, it's the day the Switch Lite releases, as well as a bunch of games as well, and there's two big ones that day. The first one is Link's Awakening, and this was planned so perfectly, a brand new Nintendo handheld system with a Zelda game that's a remake of a handheld Game Boy game. This beloved Game Boy Classic is getting a fresh coat of paint, a really, really fresh coat of paint. It looks absolutely stunning. In The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, Link washes ashore on a mysterious island with a ton of strange inhabitants, some of which might look familiar to you. Link's Awakening actually features foes from the Mushroom Kingdom. Mario's famous enemies like a piranha plant, chain chumps, and goombas are all in Link's Awakening. It's really random, but uh, you're gonna love it. <laughs> and for those looking for some new content, <laughs> there's actually unlimited new content in the form of you creating your own in a Zelda dungeon maker. It doesn't look super in-depth like the Mario Maker, but it does look like it's gonna be a ton of fun. And by the way, with this Link Dungeon Zelda Maker, if you include the rumored Super Nintendo games that are apparently coming to Switch pretty soon, that means that my fake direct is pretty much completed now. Yeah, Dead by Daylight was never really a game I had that much interest in. To be honest, until recently, I didn't really even know what this game was about. But then, Friday the 13th dropped on the Switch and I've been playing it a lot. Like, a, a lot. 40 hours or more. Without making this a review of that game, since I haven't actually even talked about that game in a video yet, I'll just say despite all its flaws, which it certainly has, the main premise of the game being that one person plays the role of a crazed, somewhat super-powered killer on the loose, trying to track down the remaining seven players and put an end to all of them in the most brutal of ways before they find an escape is, uh... Addicting. Whether I'm the killer hunting down my prey or a victim scrambling to throw gas into an escape vehicle or call the police for help, it's just fun screaming with my friends to help me or to, you know, stay still while I... 
And Dead by Daylight looks pretty much the same. It has the exact same premise, just with different gameplay mechanics, and apparently will even be featuring some really cool looking Stranger Things DLC, where you can play as the killer Demigorgon, or try to escape as Nancy or my favorite character in the show, Steve. So there's a lot to look forward to when I play the game for the first time on September 24th. Isn't it about time Mario's rejected brother <laughs> finally gets another game? Well, it is. It's happening. You know about it. Luigi's Mansion 3. <laughs> Luigi's always been my favorite. It, actually, so I'm really excited. This time around, players will utilize a new flubber version of Luigi called Gooigi. I don't know if whoever thought of that name should get a raise or be fired. <laughs> Gooigi looks to be adding a whole new dynamic to the gameplay and puzzle solving. Players will swap between both characters utilizing their unique abilities to make it through the creepy ghost-filled hotel. From what I've seen, this game looks like a ton of fun with a lot of hilarious characters and situations. And we can watch Luigi lose his cool on Halloween this year. October 30, you know, you know when Halloween is. You're ready to get your candy. Panic Button still doing great work on the Switch. <laughs> Doom Eternal is on the way. The Doom reboot that launched in 2016 took many by surprise. After an extremely long development cycle, it was hard to know what to expect. However, it went on to blow our socks off with its fast pace and frantic first person combat and the intense heavy metal soundtrack. And I'm not sure which one of those I preferred probably the soundtrack. Doom Eternal looks to be building on top of the reboot in the best of ways. Doom Eternal puts more emphasis on traversal, adding a fancy new hookshot device that lets you lunge towards enemies. And on top of that, the gameplay we've seen shows a lot more swinging, jumping, and climbing. It just looks a lot more seamless than last time. Somehow, making the game even faster paced. <sighs> Doom Eternal shoots its way onto Switch day and date with the other platforms on November 22nd, which is something that I love, getting the Switch port on the same day. It doesn't feel like I'm missing out. Here's the thing, if I didn't put Pokemon Sword and Shield on the list, everyone would be like, how did you forget Pokemon Sword and Shield? But putting it on the list seems redundant because who doesn't know that's coming and who isn't excited for it? Well, there's probably some people that don't care about Pokemon, but you at least know that it's happening, right? <laughs> Pokemon Sword and Shield has caught a lot of flack due to the graphics not being up to snuff with most other games in 2019. And oh, on top of that, many people are upset with the removal of the National Pokedex and other features. And while I do personally feel like those gripes are justified, a new generation of Pokemon is still pretty darn exciting. I am very eager to explore the Galar region and see what type of insane Pokemon Game Freak has come up with this time. I mean, it's literally just what, in my opinion. I'm not a huge Pokemon guy, but a new Pokemon game for me is about the new Pokemon. And I feel like Gotta Catch Em All still works as long as you're catching all the Pokemon in that said game. I think what they messed up is trying to put some of the old Pokemon in and not all of them. But the new gimmicks this time around is supersizing your Pokemons during battle, which is called Dynamaxing. I'm hoping this is a good replacement for the Z moves and Mega Evolutions, which are sadly not in Sword and Shield. Dynamaxing just looks like bigger boys. I hope that is still fun. At the end of the day, I'm sure Game Freak has seen all the criticisms online. While this new entry in the series might not be the leap forward that we have all wanted, I have hope that all the criticisms will be rectified in the next mainland entry after Pokemon Sword and Shield. It's kind of like too little too late at this point, but just take that on board Game Freak and do it next time. And if they don't, Oh boy. <laughs> Yet another Xbox has been exclusive game is finding its way to Switch with Ori and the Blind Forest. And this one I'm really hyped for. Ori and the Blind Forest was praised due to its beautiful art direction, tight and responsive platforming and incredible storytelling. I absolutely adore the timeline that we are currently living in where Microsoft and Nintendo are BFFs. Now all we can hope for is that the Ori sequel finds its way to Switch as well. So if you haven't played the first Ori, you don't have excuse uses anymore. It'll be a must-play Nintendo Switch game on September 27th. Hey, uh, remember when I said that my fake direct is coming true? Well, this is part of that. The Witcher 3 is almost here. Back when we got Skyrim on Switch, my mind was blown. I made a whole video about that. Actually had a lot of fun rolling around the woods naked. Well, I wasn't naked. I, it was... But yeah, Skyrim on Switch was crazy, and now you're telling me we're getting Witcher 3? I never thought this would be possible. And surprisingly, The Witcher 3 actually looks and plays pretty great on Switch. CD Project Red recently posted a meaty video preview showing off the game on Switch, and it's quite impressive. The fact that we can play that game on this thing makes me feel like I'm living in 2099. 
You might remember the demo for Damon X Machina hitting the switch at some point in the last few months. I've forgotten when. I checked it out and it was okay. Definitely really rough around the edges. But the devs took in a bunch of feedback after that demo and have been working really hard on the game. If you did play that demo, they have enhanced the gameplay significantly since then. Adding things like being able to lock on enemies easier, health bars to bosses, and even indicators showing which direction enemy fire is coming from. So if you checked it out and you weren't sure, it's worth rechecking it. And if you haven't checked it at all, it's worth getting excited for. Okay, you remember when I said September 20 was going to be a big day because there was a couple games and the Switch Lite? Well, here's the other big one. And it's another JRPG. So there's so many JRPGs. We get Link and Nino Kuni in the same day. It's gonna be a big year. <laughs> the masterpiece RPG designed by Level 5 in cooperation with Studio Ghibli is coming to Nintendo Switch. Nino Kuni tells the story of Oliver as he travels in the biggest adventure of his life after a tragic event occurs. After he has this life-changing event, Oliver meets a magical creature named Drippy, which takes Oliver to a new world. Oliver and Drippy will embark on a quest to help revert the tragic events that changed his life. Nino Kuni is a gorgeously delivered game with a memorable timeless story that remains as relevant today as it did when it first released. You know I found out the other day that Mario and Sonic on Wii U is getting kind of expensive, so you might want to jump on Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games 2020 when it releases on Switch. Mario finally takes a break from rescuing Peach and Sonic finally takes a break from collecting rings to enjoy the Olympic Games. Mario and Sonic are back with their friends for another sporting spectacle. This time around they are getting together for one of their biggest Olympic adventures at the Olympic Olympic Games Tokyo 2020. I honestly do not like these games. Completely unapologetically do not like these games, but <laughs> it's a big release for Switch and I hope you're looking forward to it. Moving on. Game Freak is at it again with a yet another game coming this year. Town this time, not Pokemon, not, not nothing, nothing to do with that, a brand new IP. This RPG is set in a small village and the village has enjoyed a lasting peace as it's under the protection of a mighty castle, but nothing lasts forever. <laughs> and this also applies to the small town that I mentioned earlier. So are you gonna let these monsters roll in the town and destroy everything? I doubt it. If you're playing the game, you're probably gonna want to beat it. So, destroy the monsters. <laughs> no, I'm actually really looking forward to town. It's one of my most excited for the year. I think this next one speaks for itself. 15 years after it was originally released, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles, the co-op RPG is being remastered for Nintendo Switch. And now with the new online multiplayer mode, you and your friends can connect and adventure together with no link cable required. Remember those days? On top of that, there are new areas inside dungeons, so even returning fans like myself can dive back into some new content. Although to be fair, I don't really remember any of this game anyway, so I doubt I'll actually even be able to pick out what's new here. I wanted to add this one, even though I feel like it's not like one of the biggest releases this year, but I'm really excited for it and wanted to hype it up and screw it, it's my video, you can't tell me what to do. I love a good pun and Darksiders 2 Definitive Edition, which is hard to say, but I really appreciate the pun, is coming September 26. This hack and slash action adventure game has everything from fantastic combat to deep story with great twists. As war between heaven and hell wages on, it brings Earth closer to impending doom. The second horseman of the apocalypse is awakened. You play that role and it's up to death to stop Earth from falling into oblivion and redeem his brother in the process. So. This game is really good. I played this game on Wii U and I absolutely loved it. It reminds me of a weird mashup of like Prince of Persia and Zelda games with dungeons and exploring. It's kind of pretty different to the first one too. So if you played the first one recently and didn't like it or even did like it, it's still worth checking out the second one either way because it improves on it, but is also very different. I don't think I have to tell anybody that Spyro Reignited Trilogy is on the way to Switch, but I will anyway, because it's what I get paid for. <laughs> the classic platform adventures of Spyro are back. Not only that, but they're also back in a full remaster and portable on the Switch. All the games of the Spyro series have been included in this remaster in stunning HD. The collection contains Spyro the Dragon, Spyro 2 Ripto's Rage, and Spyro Year of the Dragon. You know these games, we're good. Here's one though you probably aren't as familiar with, 
Risk of Rain 2. To many of you that watched that last indie direct Nintendo held during Gamescom, Risk of Rain 2 coming to Switch might be no surprise now. But I feel that the excitement might have slipped past most people, even those who were watching due to the lack of gameplay that Nintendo showed. But there is a reason Nintendo started the event with that game. It's an awesome game and you should not overlook it. Risk of Rain 2 is a third person shooter roguelike game made by a couple of young game developers. And as soon as this game went into early beta, Gearbox, the guys behind the Borderlands series, picked it up immediately to help publish the game. It's just that good. And that's actually how I heard about the game for the first time. Gearbox headquarters is actually here in my town and they invited me out back in May to play Borderlands 3 and while I was there they kept talking about Risk of Rain. I said I wanted to check it out so they gave me a Steam code and I fell in love with it. And after playing it I told them guys this needs to be on Switch. It, it is just a perfect Switch game. And when I said that, they were acting very coy about the whole thing. Like, oh, maybe, maybe. I don't know if they were planning it and couldn't say it, or maybe my suggestion got us to where we are right now. In Risk of Rain, you can either roll solo or have up to four players, slaughtering enemies and passing through levels with a big boss battle triggered at the end of each of them. Kind of like wave after wave of a horde mode. Killing enemies will unlock chests, giving you access to new abilities, getting increasingly stronger, which you will need because every five minutes, the difficulty ramps up even more, all the way from easy to straight up laughing in your face. And now I know I use this word a lot, but Risk of Rain 2, it, it really is one of those addicting games that you just want to keep going one more round, one more round with your friends, so it's gonna work so well on Switch and I'm really excited. Regardless of your feelings on game remasters in general, the next game remaster is one that we can all get behind, the Ghostbusters video game remastered. Look, the reason why this game is so freaking good is because it's widely regarded as the closest thing we will ever get to a third Ghostbusters movie. It was actually written by Dan Aykroyd and the late Harold Ramis and starring all the original cast, yes even including Bill Murray, and all of the supporting and the side characters. Ghostbusters the video game was one of the best movie adaptations of all time. Beyond the fantastic story with all the actors back playing their roles, it's actually a really super fun game too. And you can play it co-op. There is so much to love about this game. It's near perfect as far as what it aimed to accomplish. And this time around, the Nintendo version doesn't have to be heavily modified. It'll be the same as all the other versions. Even though, myself included, many people preferred the Wii's cartoony take on the game. It had to change up the way the game looked and played a little bit so it could fit on the Wii. It actually ended up being better, in my opinion. Look, I'll tell you why I really enjoy making these videos. I'm the kind of guy that really gets excited for upcoming games and every couple months or so, I'll start actually Googling what games are coming soon. So when I start Googling that, it's just so hard to not then make a video about that. And also, and I'm not even kidding, sometimes I will forget what's coming and I'll go back and rewatch my own videos and see what I said and I actually end up helping myself. Wait, where was Dragon Quest? I actually just realized I forgot Dragon Quest. I didn't write anything, I'm not prepared here. Dragon Quest just recently got a demo dropped on Switch and it's like 10 hours long. You can pick it up and you can play it now and all your progress will carry over into the game when it actually releases and I'm pretty sure it's September 30th. I'm way more prepared than I thought I was on this one. It actually looks and plays so freaking good. Like there was comparisons put online, which you're seeing right now, between PlayStation 4 Pro and the Switch version. Sure, there's a difference, but not much. This looks like one of the best ports on Switch so far. Not to mention it's the definitive edition of the game too with an all new orchestral soundtrack that they redid because apparently the music wasn't that good the first time but now it's beautiful. You can play it in an 8-bit style as well. You can switch between the two which is so cool and there's a bunch of new stuff added to the game. It's probably in my top three most anticipated games for the rest of the year. Sorry I forgot that one uh, but I don't think I did too bad in the end. I hope you enjoyed this video. My battery is literally about to die on the camera and I'm feeling just so stupidly delirious. My tooth is hurting so much now that it's given me a headache. For my pain and suffering Smash like on this video. Subscribe if you're still watching it right now. I appreciate it. Oh, hey, flip. I forgot. Subscribe on the, <laughs> on the button thing. I got links down below to all my social medias and, and merch and just everything that you can just go click and look and explore the links down below. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me today. You can leave a comment. What's the, what's the most favorite thing you're looking forward to? Thanks.